Hey guys, hi and welcome to the video. This video I'll be showing you and demonstrating you how to use Kafka with Elasticsearch. This small example I'll be showing you a producer and a consumer. Very easy, right? And uh, before that, I just want to show you what we're going to build. As you can see, uh, this dashboard updates real time, right? Uh, it, 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 uh, it is essentially pumping data. So the producers, um, as you can see, I have my Elasticsearch running. I have my Kibana running on my, uh, on my computer, right? See this count is increasing, right? Uh, all I'm doing is, I'm, so as you can see, right? Uh, I'm publishing fake data, right? Essentially, these are fake data. And my consumer is also listening to that topic, right? So as soon as a message comes in, right? Uh, and as you can see, real time, it updates here. And also I see the document count uh, increasing on my uh, Kibana, right? Kibana is essentially a, a, a way to visualize your data. And as you can see, 211, right? So uh, let's uh, see how to um, do this, right? So uh, assuming you are a beginner, you know, I, I wanna go very basic, right? So uh, if you come here and essentially just type in the word Kafka, and then we'll go over the code part in a, in a second. First of all, there are a lot of blogs that will essentially help you to essentially get started with uh, Kafka and Python, right? But I, I, I really want to make things easy uh, in, a, in a very simple way, not going into this zookeeper and all these stuff. Very, very, very simple. Well, all a Kafka is essentially think about producers are producing messages into the, in, into the, uh, into the Kafka, right? And consumers are going to consume messages from these topics, right? That is all Kafka is. Again, there is a lot more. We can go into details like partitions and other stuff. But I don't want to overwhelm, right? I want to do a hello world. I want to show you, okay, this is what it is. And if you want, you can come here and read more, right? So for example, uh, you know, you have producers. Producer can produce for a multiple topic. Consumer can consume messages from multiple topic, right? This is essentially, um, you know, how Kafka works, right? You can come here and take a look at it. I have a very simple Docker Compose file, right? So uh, this will start my Kafka on my uh, computer, right? So what I need to do is if you come to terminal, right? All you gotta do is come into the project directory and I'll just show you. So here learning Kafka, you'll have a docker compose.yml. All you gotta say docker compose up hyphen hyphen build. You just have to type this command and your Kafka would start uh, running locally. So right, so I'll show you. Uh, by issuing this command, you'll start the Kafka on your computer, right? Assuming you have Docker installed. Now, my consumer is very easy, right? Uh, this is essentially, uh, yeah, sorry, my producer, not my bad. So my producer is essentially, I'm just importing a li Python library called uh, Kafka Pi Python. Uh, you can install that by using a simple pip command called, uh, here, this one, right? Pip install Kafka Python, right? This is a client library. I'm, a, I'm essentially now here, I'm saying producer, and remember my uh, Kafka is running on port 9092 on my local host using a Docker, right? I'm creating an instance called Faker. I'm uploading a thousand documents, json.dumpers, right? Uh, I'm essentially encoding my document and producer.send. Uh, if you wanna wait for the, do for, the pr for the consumer to consume and then you wanna send another document, uh, there is something called um, succeeded or this call is done, you could essentially say, uh, you know, you could write a code if, if you want, right, as I, as I said, right? So, just wanna show you. So, ideally is um, uh, succeeded would be uh, false, right? Because the consumer has not consumed the topic. So, uh, what we wanna say, we can say if uh, uh, response that succeeded, if it, if it is true, we wanna, you know, break it else, you wanna, so you could essentially, uh, you know, if needed, you could essentially write a logic, a while loop, like keep waiting until and unless my consumer has consumed the message. But ideally we don't do that, you know, uh, the whole idea of Kafka is, you know, publish the message and the consumers are gonna uh, take these messages, uh, right? So uh, I have left these print statements for you. So you, if, you, if needed, you can play with it, right? Uh, so now like, taking a look at the consumer, this is very easy, right? It's very easy. I have a Kafka consumer here. I have my topic that I'm listening to, first topic. Producers are producing messages on the first topic, right? These are my consumer that are gonna consume these messages. Uh, this is my Elasticsearch, which is on localhost 9200, right? 
I have a simple class that takes JSON data, hash key, and an index name, right? All this class does is basically has a method called upload, which will upload a single document to Elasticsearch, right? So now, very self-explanatory. Consumer, I, I'm essentially creating consumer um, object, and then I'm saying for message in consumer, for each message, I'm, I'm, I'm deserializing my JSON uh, back. I'm putting the metadata from Kafka, for example, topic, partition, offset, timestamp, timestamp, type and key, and then I just call my class, right? For example, now I'm calling my class, uh, here I'm saying, I'm passing the payload, I'm passing the index name as the topic name, you could do theoretically whatever you want, right? Uh, the hash key is gonna be the offset, right? That's, you know, anytime you insert a document to Kafka, it gets inserted at the back, right? So that's gonna be your offset number, right? So I'm essentially putting that as a document ID. And uh, yeah, that that's pretty much Kafka, man. So, um, so, I run this here, right? My producer, right? These are, I'm using a faker library to, you know, publish fake data, uh, which is publishing at an interval of one second, right? Uh, as you can see, uh, we can remove this one second, right? And as soon as I start my consumer, right? These consumers are gonna consume these messages in uh, near real time, as I, I use the word near real time, right? So as you can see, uh, you know, works great. The video might lag because I'm running Elasticsearch, Docker, Kafka, everything on my computer. So uh, as you can see, right, 230, right, you'll see this count increasing, right? And if you need a strategy to create indexes based on uh, every day or a week, so you could develop your logic in the consumer, right? So you're, you'll only, so as you can see, it's updating, right? So while creating this indexes, right, you can say, you could, you, you could essentially come here and say, use this logic, for example, or, I mean, I, I personally prefer year, month, if you're doing a daily, you know, index, right? So you could do something like this, right? But if you don't need daily, if you need a monthly index, maybe something like this, or if you don't need that, just put everything in one index, doesn't matter, right? So uh, yeah, it's um, that easy. So I can show you here, cat indices, this, this will show you. And again, I'm running everything locally, so it might be a slow. So now I can come and I can use the word search here. And here are my documents, right? Essentially, which were published to from, which were published from the producer, right? So yeah, it's that easy. I'll leave the source code in the description section below. Uh, and remember, you could have multiple consumers for a given topic. So for one topic, you can, uh, multiple consumers can be there. Uh, again, we don't wanna go too, too detail into um, Kafka and, and all the partitions and stuff. We will do that, but not in this video. This is a hello world video or a hello world project. The goal is essentially, uh, the goal of the, the video is following, right? Number one, install Elasticsearch on your local machine. Number two, get your Kafka working through a Docker, right? Install Docker if not. Third, given code, just simply run and observe how things are coming out. Once you have the basic, then we can gradually add items in the code, okay? All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next upcoming labs.